Hello, welcome back. So today we're going to be start talking about random variables and specifically discrete random variables. Okay, kind of the basics there. So, so what is a random variable? If you remember when we were working through these probability ideas, the end result or, or where we're trying to get is what we call a probability model, right? Using the ideas of probability to model some kind of experiment or some kind of some kind of situation. Right? So a random variable is, is a form of a probability model. Right? It's thinking about a situation, outlining a situation, saying, okay, here are the potential values that this variable could take on, and how do I assign a probability to each of those values? All right? So notation-wise, here's what we're looking at. Um, usually the random variable itself is denoted by a, a capital letter, right? usually X. Right, and a specific value is denoted by a lowercase letter. Okay, so if I write something like this, right, the P of big capital X equal to little x, right, that means the probability of my random variable being exactly equal to some number. Some other kind of shorthand ways things might be written, you might see it written just as P of x with the actual value itself there in parentheses. f of x is a very common way, especially when we're dealing with kind of the more mathematical side of probability. Okay, so, so for example, what that might look like, the probability of capital X equal to 3. Probability of a random variable being equal to exactly 3, and only 3. Alright, so that's notation-wise and, and what a random variable is. So we do have continuous and discrete random variables. Right? Now we've visited this idea before. You know what continuous means, you know what discrete means. Remember it's all about countability. Right? So a discrete random variable tells us we have a countable number of outcomes. Now some people will tell you that discrete means finite, continuous means infinite, but we know that's not true, right? It's it's about countability. You can be countably infinite Right? And you can also be uncountably infinite. So countably infinite things, or countably finite, point is that it's countable, that's a discrete random variable. Right? Continuous random variables is we typically have things defined on intervals. Right? It's, it's uncountable. It's all the, the real numbers on a certain interval, something like that. Okay, so we're starting with discrete random variables here, right? Because probably something countable is probably going to be easy to work with with something that is uncountable. So let's look at some examples of some things that would qualify as discrete random variables. Right? We need to be able to look at a situation and think, could, this, could I treat this as a discrete random variable or a continuous random variable? Okay, so we've got some business. They have 48 different, different phone lines, maybe customer service lines or something like that. And our random variable is the number of lines in use. This random variable could be anything from 0 to 48. In other words, x is defined, and we're using some, some interval notation here. x could be greater than or equal to 0, less than or equal to 48. Now notice this is an inclusive interval here. It's less than or equal to, greater than or equal to. Alright, so you couldn't use, you could use 0 lines, you could use 1 line, you could use 2 lines, but you couldn't use... 1.5 lines or 6.467 lines, right? So it's going to be countable no matter how many you're using, 0 through 48. Think about another situation, right? We're, we're at a toll booth or an intersection or something like that, and we're going to observe how many cars come for an hour. So maybe you're thinking, oh, we've got a time period here, an hour. There, there could be an infinite amount of cars at this uh this toll booth or this intersection or red light or whatever in an hour. Okay, but remember, even though you could potentially see an infinite amount of cars there, you can see zero cars, one car, two cars, ten, a hundred million, a thousand, whatever. Zero cars, one car, two cars, a hundred, a thousand, a million. There's not necessarily an upper cap on this, right? So there's an infinite amount of values we could get, but it's a countable infinity. Right, so this would still be discrete. So what can we do beyond just describing or, or identifying discrete random variables? The next step is to think about, once we've 
realize something's a discrete random variable, we got an idea of what values it could take on. That's where defining its distribution comes in. Okay? So remember, we need the potential values this variable can take on and a way to assign or associate probabilities with each of those values. Okay? Now typically this is done with a table, especially for discrete random variables. Maybe it could also be a graph or a formula or something like that. Most of the time though it's going to be a table. When we list all of our possible outcomes and associated probabilities in a table, what we're looking at is called our probability mass function. Okay? So your probability mass function is the probability of x being equal to exactly and only one specific value. Right? So, and lots of times we have it listed in a table like this. So each potential value and its corresponding probability. All right, so this is our PMF probability mass function. Right? Every single one of these probabilities, now these, these actually follow from our first two axioms of probability. Any PMF value or any probability needs to be between 0 and 1, and they all need to sum up to 1 to be a valid probability distribution. Okay, so our PMF value, and sometimes also you see this called PDF values. Um, now for discrete random variables, technically it should be called a PMF value. Okay, so we've got our PMF. And the next big thing we need to talk about here is our CDF. Okay, so your CDF, the C stands for cumulative distribution function, right? We know what cumulative means. Cumulative means just adding stuff up, stuff up as we go. All right, so basically what your CDF is, is the sum of PMF values up until that point, right? So my CDF tells me less than or equal to X, right? So your PMF tells you equal to exactly some number. Your CDF is everything up until that number. In other words, the sum of all PMFs before that value. Okay, so your CDF can come from your PDF, like here, so your first CDF value is just going to be the same as your PMF value for your first value there. Right? But then my second CDF value will be probability 1 plus probability 2. My third, 1 plus 2 plus 3. My fourth, 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4, and so forth, until I get to my last one, which should always add up to 1. Okay. So if I'm given a PMF, I should be able to build my CDF from there. Or if I'm given my CDF, I actually could reverse engineer that to build my PMF as well. So once we've got our CDF together, we've got our PMF, we can do pretty much everything that we need to do as far as solving problems with discrete random variables. Okay, those are the two basic building blocks of, of anything we need to do. All right.